now sigma xx is given by mz by izz minus into y minus y naught right mz we have found before izz for a given cross section let us assume the cross section to be rectangular let us assume the cross section to be rectangular with the following dimensions this is y this is z this is b this is h okay now y naught should be the center of the cross section which means this is the cg of the cross section you know that for the rectangular section the cg is at half the width and half the height of the cross section hence this distance is going to be p by 2 and this distance is going to be h by 2 okay now I am locating I am measuring y from the center of the cross section. So, y naught is 0 from here y naught is 0 because the origin of the cross section coincides with the center of the cross section ok. Now, what is i z z? Now, i z z for this cross section is integral y square dy minus h by 2 to h by 2 into dz minus b by 2 to b by 2 right ok. So, in z I am integrating from this point to this point the width is the same. So, it does not matter how I integrate ok y square dy is from this end to this end I have to integrate y square dy I have to integrate from this end to this end. So, it is from minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 ok. The width is remaining constant. So, it does not matter how I the order of the integration is what the order of the integration is. So, this integrates from minus b by 2 to plus b by 2 along the y direction. So, this will be integral minus b by 2 to b by 2 y square by 3 y cube by 3 from minus h by 2 to h by 2 into dz which will be h cube by 12 into integral dz minus b by 2 to b by 2 which will be nothing but h cube into b by 12 ok. So, i z z is from here you got i z z to be b h cube by 12 ok. So, from the previous derivation we got m z to be w by 2 l x minus x square ok. So, sigma x x is now given by minus w by 2 to l x minus x square divided by b h cube by 12 into y ok. Now, you find that across the depth of the cross section the sigma x is varies linearly ok. So, across the depth of the cross section the variation of sigma x x is linear with what happens at the top at the top y is positive bending moment is also positive ok. So, the stress has to be negative ok. So, that is why it is in compression it is in compression acting like this and the bottom surface y is negative y is negative at the bottom at, at this end at this end y is negative and hence the stress has to be positive ok because the bending moment is positive ok. So, it varies like this ok. Now, this is just the sigma x x variation with respect to y and this point is the cg of the cross section this is the cg of the cross section ok. But what are we interested in? We are interested in where the maximum sigma x x occurs and what is the value of this maximum sigma x x. Maximum sigma x x will occur where 
the bending moment m z is maximum divided by b h q by 12 and you know that since it is varying linearly the extreme points is where the maximum occurs. So, in the sigma axis is varying linearly the extremum points is where the maximum stresses occur. So, it will be at h by 2 at h by 2 ok. We just now saw that m z max is given by w l square by 8 ok and uh, so this expression becomes into 6 by b h square right sigma axis max ok. Now let us do an analysis now I will rewrite sigma axis max as w 3 by 4 b into l by h the whole square ok. Now the w is force per unit length right that is w by definition was integral sigma y y into d z right from minus b by 2 to b by 2 that is sigma y y into b was w. So, w by b is sigma y y right. So, this happens to be sigma y y into 3 by 4 into l by h the whole square ok. Typically for a beam l by h for beams would be greater than 10 ok. For those beams only whatever we are doing is valid. If the beam is too short or too deep whatever we are doing is not valid ok. So, then you find that sigma axis max is roughly is roughly 100 times sigma y y. So, even though the applied stress is sigma y y the stress resultant the stress that is developed in the beam because of the application of a sigma y y stress is 100 times more than the applied stress ok. That is why it is important to compute what the stress is it is not equal just enough to find what is the stress that is applied ok. The developed stress can be much more than the applied stress ok. This is a thing we will see repeatedly in this course now ok. So, this is sigma x x.